Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Marilyn Smith at Spring Valley Church of God. Welcome to G1E. That's G1 Elementary, because we are kids in grade one through four. And we are encouraging families to live God first lives. So welcome. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about who we are. Can I ask you a question? Who are you? Okay, good. Good answers. Well, before we find out who we really are, let's take a minute to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we say thank you for this day. Thank you for this glorious morning. Thank you that we can come together to learn about you and to share with each other. We ask that you will bless this time. Open up our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to see you, to hear you, and to understand exactly who you created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we are talking about who we are. Earlier I asked you, who are you? Well, if you were to ask me who I am, I could say that I am a wife, I'm a mother, I am a friend. I am a, a worker. I am so many different things. But the most important thing I am is that I am God's creation. Now, you may have said that you are a big brother or sister, a friend, a student, an athlete, or how about a gamer for all of you video game players? Those are all great things to be. But you know what? We have to do something to be those things. For example, if we are a big brother or a sister, we might need to take care of our little brother or sister. And that might fill us up. It might fill our hearts with joy and make us feel happy. But guess what? What happens if you were to drop your baby brother or sister and mom says, oh, no more holding the baby. No more taking care of him you would then feel disappointed. You might feel um, out of place. You might feel like you don't belong. You might feel like you did something wrong. You might feel unloved. So now you're left feeling that way. How about if you are a friend? Well, friends do lots of things. They get together, they talk, they um, go different places, they have sleepovers, they celebrate one another's birthday, and that might make us, our hearts feel full and might make us feel happy and excited. But what happens if you get into a fight with your friend? Ooh, what happens if your friend moves away? You could be left feeling empty, disappointed, and unloved. About if you are a student, you're really good. You're getting like all kinds of A's, um, straight A's. And that makes you feel important. It makes you feel special. It makes you feel loved. But what happens if for some reason you get a bad grade or two or three or four, then you're feeling kind of heavy, kind of sad kind of disappointed and you may even feel like you have no purpose. You may even feel very unloved because now you're not performing the way you should. And how about if you are a great athlete or a great video gamer, you're making all kinds of plays on the football or soccer field, your coach and the crowd are just cheering you on and you're feeling very valuable special and important. You're feeling filled up, you're feeling loved. But what happens if one day somebody comes along and they're better than you? Coach takes you out of the game. You're standing on the sidelines and you're feeling, you're feeling upset, you're feeling sad, you're feeling disappointed, you're feeling unloved. So that just goes to show you that with these things, we have to do something to feel loved. And you know what? These things could actually change. They could go away. They're all good things, but they will eventually change and even go away. 
So let's talk about who we really are. We are what God says we are, and that is his creation. You see that there? God's creation. And when we realize that we are God's creation, we feel very loved. We feel special. We feel valuable. We feel important. And we feel filled with joy because we are God's creation. When we are God's creation, we don't have to perform. We don't have to do anything to earn God's love. There's nothing good we can do to earn God's love. And there's nothing bad we can do that God would take his love away from us. No matter what we think, say, or do, God always loves us. And he pours his love out on us by telling us through the Bible that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He tells us that he formed us in our mother's womb. That means that he made us. He put us there. He put you in your mom's tummy. Did you know that? And he loves you. God tells us that we are the apple of his eye. He tells us we are his beloved. And you know what? He tells that to everybody in the whole wide world. As a matter of fact, in John 3, 16, it says that for God so loved the world, that means everybody, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That scripture means that God sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross. And if we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, we become a part of his family. So not only are we God's creation, but we are his children too. But either way, he loves us. So boys and girls, that is our lesson today. Who are you? You are God's creation. And there's nothing you can do to earn God's love. There's nothing you can do to take it away. God loves you. Now take that, go and tell somebody. You have some friends and family who really need to know that. All right? Good to see you guys. I'll catch you later. God bless you.